Hello there. Uh, welcome to Lit with Lloyd. I am your host, Lloyd Russell. Uh, and today we've got uh, an author uh, of a book that I can really relate to. Uh, it's a book about a school in Los Gatos that uh, started out as the uh, country or the children's country school uh, and is now called Hillbrook. Uh, and it's where uh, my three kids went over the course of 19 years. Uh, so this is going to be a lot of fun for me. Uh, Paul DeMarco is the author. And Paul, welcome. It's great to have you here. Awesome to be here. Okay. A lot so of fun. Here is, here's Paul's book, uh, As the Twig is Bent. And let's start with where the title came from. Okay. So... Um the title uh, comes from the founder of the school. Uh, her name was Mary Oram, and um, she um, studied with a psychologist named Alfred Adler. And Alfred Adler um, had an idea about um, nature or nurture over nature when teaching a child. And as the twig is bent, is the idea is that if you um, if you shape a child's uh, nature, that their character will grow. So as the twig is bent, as the child's nature is bent, they will grow in character. Okay, that's very cool. Yeah. Who, how, how did you come up with it, though? I mean, how did you even know that that was the case, just like from research? So um, the, the thing that's, that's wonderful about this book is that I have actual writings um, from all the founders of the school of their philosophical and educational concepts. So I had a wealth of information in front of me, um, but the information was scattered in many, many boxes, <laughs> and I had to pull a story that I didn't even know existed out of it. And I was able to uh, take writings from the actual founders of the school and files of students from the school and uh, put that together. And I um, was able to interview these, these students and it became a story after I talked to people. Wow. Right. I didn't know there was a story there. I was just kind of interested in, hmm, what if these students are still alive? They're probably in their 70s. And then when I started to talk to them, I thought, wow, this place was pretty unique. Uh, and I, I couldn't stop. So wow. it became about a, a, a 10 year uh, love <laughs> of research. All yeah. right. What is your connection with Hillbrook School? So I was a teacher at Hillbrook School. I was there uh, for over 20 years. Wow. Um, I started in 2000 um, and I left in 2021, 2020. Yeah. Okay, so you started two years after my last child graduated. Oh, really? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you I know, didn't know I was that close. Yeah, okay. we, we were there from 79 to 98. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, wow. All right, all right. so what, what made you even think about writing the book in the first place? Okay, so the, the way it started is it was actually, uh, it was a back-to-school night, uh, which is usually in September, and I was up in the main office of the school, and there was this really cool black and white photo on the counter. And it was a, a little boy sitting in a, um, uh, in a chair outside a, uh, a building that looked like a, um, um, a little uh, cottage that you would see in Disneyland. And I was, just, I was just taken by the photo. I'm like, that's a cool photo. And uh, someone in the office says, oh, well, that's on campus. I said, that was taken here? And they said, you know, yeah. And I said, wow, that's really cool. And then I asked, is there any type of history that goes with the school? And they said, I don't know. I know there's stuff up in the tower. Now, what they mean by the tower is there's an old water tower on campus. I think it's 1918 water tower. <laughs> <clears throat> it's a um, historical landmark. Um, it's not used because the, it's not structurally sound. Uh -huh. But uh, that night... <laughs> uh, I climbed the stairs and I went up into that building and it was just strewn with 
um, boxes of files and file cabinets. But everything I was looking at was from the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. Uh huh. And it's 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 gonna it's gonna sound like a a, a fateful story here. But <laughs> I was about to leave the room, huh. and I took one last look, and I saw this green cardboard long probably about three foot long file cabinet and just didn't match anything else in the room so i unloaded the box the boxes on top and pulled it out and it was absolutely full i mean extremely heavy that it took everything just to open it and when i opened it up it was like full of papers and i just opened one arbitrary file and it was 1938 and I'm a history buff. Uh-huh. And I was like, wow, this is like golden treasure for me. Now, understand, I'm not looking to write a book. I'm just, there's a photo. <laughs> I went to see if there was history. Here was this cardboard cabinet that went home with me that night. And I then started a practice where at night I would take a file out and I would read it. And it could be a student. Um, it could be receipts as boring as that sounds. I'm a history buff. So I'm looking at, Oh, this was a store in Las Gatas and Oh, this is the clothing store. And so, and then as I started to read the files, I'm starting to get personalities. So I'm seeing that this kid was a little naughty. This kid was a leader. This kid had, um, uh, um, parents that lived on the East coast. Um, and as I read more and more files, I became more interested in, man, I wonder if these people are still around. So that led me to try to find them. So this is 2011. So what I would do is I would <clears throat> find a student's name. I would use Yahoo People Search. I would type their name in and they would print out all of those names of that student in the United States. Huh. If it was a common name, I would strictly do California. If not, I'd go for it. So I would spend my breaks at school and I would make these long distance phone calls. And the call was very simple. It was, it was the same thing every time. Huh. My name is Paul DeMarco calling from Las Gatas, California. Were you ever a student at the Children's Country School? <laughs> and every answer was, California, thank you for your time, right? I've never been to, thank you for your time, right? Nothing, getting nothing. One day, did the whole spiel, and one voice said, um, tell me more. <laughs> and I explained myself a little more. And how do you know about this? So then I'm looking at the name and I'm going, okay, I've got this guy and I'm look, making sure I got his phone number. He ended up being the nephew of the founder of the school. Oh my gosh. And he was way out on the East coast. He was, ah. he was in, he was in Connecticut. He was very protective. He did not really want to talk to me at first. He was <laughs> very protective. I had to prove myself. Uh, so here was my first connection. And what, what that became was, uh, me asking, do you know of anyone else that is around? Well, I think so-and-so's in California. I think this name is in Oregon. I'm sorry, could you say that name again? <laughs> uh, so once I found one person, it would lead to more people or at uh. least a general search. I think they're in Utah. So this became a game. This became, I, I loved what I was doing. This was, uh, this was a, a research where I was just doing it for my own interest. I wasn't doing this for, you know, I was, um, for Hilbrick school, I was doing it just because I loved it. It became a fun search. So my summers as a school teacher were finding people, interviewing people. And as I interviewed them, the story became extremely eclectic. And now I understand why this cabinet was left behind. They knew that there was something special going on at this school and someone kept those files because it had documented writings wow. from the founders that were phenomenal. Unbelievable. Yeah. So it was a labor of love um, and it just kept growing and it was about a 10 year um, 
a 10 year search. So the book was published in 2011. So you actually started this in 2001? Yeah, I, the year after I started teaching at the yeah. school. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that, it was wonderful. That's amazing. Yeah. When when you kept getting people not from California, yes. did you ever get discouraged and think about stopping or not? N no. <laughs> um, and you have to also understand, too, that um, I know there were there were many people who not that they thought I was crazy, but the idea was, how interesting can it be? <laughs> how, why are you so passionate about this? It was a school, big deal. But I knew what was going on behind the scenes. And, I, and I, it, it, it was fascinating. And it seemed like everyone I would talk to, I'd find something even more interesting where I'm like, wow, this is, it just kept going. Um, so I was never discouraged. I just, at, at the same time, Lloyd, you have to realize I didn't have an end point. You know, um, I have a I have a background in video, so I always thought about making a documentary film, and and that was probably my initial idea. Um, but to make a film, I can't make a five hour film because no one's going to watch it. <laughs> so I can put much more information in than a book. So I put all put that all together, um, and wrote the book. And instead of people coming to me and saying. You know, well, tell me about this and that. Now I can say, here, just read it. Yeah. Right. Read it. And then you can talk to me. But I've got it all right here. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, how has it been received? I mean, it's been 11 years now since it was published. Yeah. Uh, did the Hillbrook community take to it? Yeah. The Hillbrook community um, would use it as a um, way of introducing new students, uh, new families to the school uh -huh. so the parents would be given a copy wow. so that they could read the history um, it was also used in history class where it was taught as um, part of regular um, uh, seventh and eighth grade history huh so I would come in and guest speak and I would um, bring documents in and photographs from the school and the kids were able to um, go through those and look at actual historical documents, so to speak. Um, so it, it was received uh, quite well. Um, I always got a kick out of it because I'd have some new parent and they'd say, are you Paul DeMarco? <laughs> like I was famous. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you yeah. actually are in the Hillbrook community. Yeah, yeah, there you go. There you go, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, do they still give this book out to new families? So we, it, well, there, there was one problem that happened. The, the, um, the publisher that published this book went bankrupt. Uh huh. And it was quite a scandal where they kind of left town and left the authors high and dry without any of their files. Oh boy. The good news is I found my files. Oh good. And I just found them this year. Wow. So we'll be republishing so that we can keep this going. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's that's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, will you try to get another publisher to? Uh, yes, I have it all, all set to go. You already have found a publisher. Yeah. Yes, I have. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and when will it uh, come out again? Um, I, I'm I'm in the process of uh, finalizing that in terms of because I have to go th I have to go through all the. Um, there's a lot of photographs in this book, uh -huh. so I have to go. I have to go through all the uh, remedials of putting everything together again. So, I'm hope hopefully I'll get that done by this summer. <laughs> uh, you said that you are you're a videographer, yes, um, and that you thought about first doing the a video of it, but you couldn't get enough info in. Has anybody else done a video of it? So, so actually what happened is this is the reverse story here. You usually hear about the book and then you hear about the film. There was actually a film made first before this book. So the, um, the school had their 75th anniversary in 2010, I think, 2010. And at the time, I was asked to work with a uh, parent who um, works in the in the um, industry, film industry, on putting together a documentary. Okay. And the documentary was on the entire history of the school. Uh -huh. So you're talking 1935 all the way up to the present. So 
I was giving my perspective from the children's country school from 1935 to 1946. So I worked with her. And the reason I worked with her is that she was one of the, um, one of the people that as I was going through this journey was someone I could always check in with on campus when she was there. Cause she was as, as excited as I was. Oh wow! So I could say, Hey, I found this. Hey, I found so-and-so and I just found this out. So she was always right there with me. So the fact that we were able to work together was wonderful. So we made a documentary film. Um, it's called as the twig is bent. Um, it did quite well. It, it won, um, a few awards, um, in, in the Bay area. Uh huh. Um, and I was proud of what we put together, but I was also frustrated because I wasn't able to tell the, the full story of the children's country school. Yeah. So I brought that up to the head of school and I said, you know, I'd like to write the book because I'd, I'd like to tell the whole story. And I was allowed to do that. And um, the book flew out of me. I wrote this really fast because I had all the information um, and it was um, something that was so cathartic when I was oh, done wow. to just get it out there and think there's nothing left. It's all there. Yeah. And now I can finally let people enjoy it. Wow. You know, um, really have no interest in selling it. Just take here. You want one? I'll give you one. Just read it. It's a cool yeah, story. Yeah. You know, it yeah. really is. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, we got to take a quick break. Okay. Uh, we'll be back with Paul DeMarco in just a minute. Thank you to the city of Montessorino for their continued support of KCAT Public Media. The city of Montessorino has enabled KCAT to inspire, educate, entertain, and inform our community through the magic of television and digital media for over 38 years. Thank you. And welcome back to Lit with Lloyd. Uh, we are talking to Paul DeMarco uh, about uh, the whole story of Hillbrook School in Los Gatos. Uh, so let's get back to it. What, what fascinates me and I would love to get more information about this, is the relatives of the founders. And uh, how, how many different people did you talk to? Oh. Oh, and did anybody from out of the area come to the Bay Area to, to talk to you? Um, <laughs> so I think I found, in total, I think I found 76 people. Oh, my gosh. Um, wow. And you're talking about, um, a, a window of 1935 to 1946. So these are, you know, it's, it's, a, you have to realize the, the school was small, so it probably had about 75 students. So to find 76 was, was a, was Holy a good feeling. Holy mackerel, that's amazing. Yeah. There are some that um, frustrate me that I never found. Um, but let's see. So uh, did we have some come from outside California? Yes. And what I would do is I would meet them on the weekend uh -huh. and I would take them to the campus and I would use an audio recorder. And if I could, I'd try to walk them around campus because they're, they're, it's, they're a little disoriented because obviously the campus has changed. Of course. There are also marks that they can see. So it was, it was nice to be able to walk them around. And then that usually jogs a memory of, oh. You know what happened here once and yeah, stories at, like at that. At this bridge and creek. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So I was able to um, to have people come in and talk. Um, I think one of, one of my favorite experiences is I had a group of them that, it was a group that uh, graduated in 1946, so they were 14 at, you know, at that time. Uh -huh. And I had them there and we were sitting in the village, um, of friendly relations and you know these are men and women in their 70s i'd say they're about six of them uh-huh and they just started singing mm. songs from when they were kids oh my gosh and nothing like you've heard before where there was no hint of shyness they 
belted it out. Oh my gosh. And I sat there and I just thought, I'm in the I'm in a different era right now. I'm in something that doesn't exist. It was really, really beautiful to be a part of. Wow. Um it sounds it sounds totally memorable. It it was very cool. Um the first person that I had come to the school and, and you asked about um relatives yeah. was the son of one of the founders. And when he came, I was in the very early stages of my research. Uh-huh. So when he came, he was a wealth of knowledge. But you have to understand that I knew the names of the founders and I had photos, but I didn't know whose name was huh. to who, you know, I didn't even know. So he and I went through photos and I'm writing as fast as I can. Who is that? Who is that? Who is that? Um, so he just gave me this wealth of knowledge because he was not only a um, grew up there, but he ended up becoming the principal in the 1960s. So he was huge for me. Wow. But my but my most interesting one was I found one of the actual founders. Oh, my gosh. And she was considered the silent partner. Um, and her name was Miss Saki by the uh-huh. students. I remember reading about it. Okay. Her full name was Masako Ishida. She was 96 when we met. I was trying to find her. I knew she was alive. I was trying to find her. And I sent wow. letters um, to three addresses. And nothing came back. Um, and then one night I came home. And uh, when we had answering machines. <laughs> and I had a message. And literally all it said was. This is Miss Saki. And she hung up. <laughs> and I'm like, I found you. But I don't know if you're going to call back. Oh right? Oh, my gosh. So a few days passed, and she called again. Oh. And I said, Miss Saki, I found you. She said, yes, this is Miss Saki. Oh, my gosh. Very regal. Very regal, but a, a weathered voice. So she and I met. Oh. And I drove to Sacramento, went to her retirement home. Um, she came out. She was very hunched over. We sat on a couch and I brought my um, photo album and I, I should tell you there's so many photos because one of the founders was a photographer ah. so there were many many photos that were taken so it's a wonderful resource so she and I sat on this couch and we talked we talked for four hours she, ah. was, she tired me out <laughs> she's 96 she knew every name and it was it was beautiful story and as I was talking to her she had an envelope on her lap and she had a little notebook on her lap and at one point I said Miss Saki is there something you want to write down she says well if I need to take notes I have my notebook <laughs> I went okay and then I said and you have an envelope and she said yes and what she wanted to show me was it was a letter written by the four main founders of the school and Miss Saki was in charge of the dormitory and it was a letter stating that she was the fifth founder of the school and she just cherished this letter. oh wow so I would know wonderful um, to meet her and then she and I had a relationship where she would call me huh. usually late at night <laughs> and she would tell me a story about the school uh. and she, she would end each conversation with Okay, then. Good night. And click. <laughs> oh, it sounds uh, Walter Cronkite. -like. Yes, yes. <laughs> and it was wonderful. And I had this wonderful relationship. And um, yeah, so um, so I, I, I found the, the two sons of the founder. I found a nephew of the founder who we only talked to because she because he was in on the East Coast. Uh huh. Um, and the other two uh, founders did not have relatives that I that I could find. Yeah. Uh, how old was Miss Saki when she passed away? Uh, 98. 98. Yeah, she had she had a stroke mm -hmm. and kind of went down from there. Yeah, but wonderful relationship. I that's that was um, that was a, a a real dream to have. Wow. And then huh. and then my biggest regret is I was at a, an alumni event at the school and a man named Bob Thompson was there. And Bob Thompson was the writing instructor at the school. 
WR or RID? Um, RID. Okay. Sorry, RID. Uh, horses. <laughs> okay. Horses. And I looked at him and I thought, my God, you look amazing. I mean, you've got to be in your 80s at least. And he was virile. And he said, you and I are going to have lunch. And I'm going to tell you about these four ladies. And I thought, wow, I get to talk to someone who knew them. Not as close as Miss Saki as partners, but someone who saw them from a different angle. Tell me their personalities. And I thought, this is awesome. He passed away a week later. I couldn't Oh, it. my god! I never had that conversation. Oh, yeah. What it would a have shame. Been the, would have been the only adult besides Miss Saki who could tell me about. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, did Hillbrook, when the book was published, did Hillbrook have any kind of... of um, festival or or special event or anything signing a book signing yeah yeah actually we did um we what we did is it was written so soon after the film coming out that it was um we did a combo we we had the film the documentary was shown at the los gatis theater downtown sure and the night that it was shown was the unveiling of the book ah so we got to do a book signing with a documentary film shown. And then me and my film partner, Felice Leeds, who was the documentary filmmaker with me, then we had a Q&A session with the, with the crowd and able to talk. So it was well, wonderful. If the book is going to be republished, maybe you can uh, do something like that again. Yeah, that'd be great, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I would be... I would be happy to to attend. Oh, nice, nice. <laughs> you nice. know, it's funny. I don't remember. You know, we get the, uh, the we get the uh, uh, news news reports. Having been parents of the school, I don't remember seeing anything about the book. Oh, okay. Uh, which means that possibly I didn't read the. <laughs> the <laughs> you read the newsletter that week. <laughs> that one week they announced it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, you said it. You you said it. You wrote it really fast. What, what does that mean? How many months did it take you? So, so what that means is when it was the 75th anniversary was coming up, so the year before, what I started to do is I started to write articles that would be uh, published in the um, Hillbrook newsletter, like, as, as you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So I wrote weekly articles. So, I, so what I had to do is I had to kind of fine tune my thoughts and say, okay, what am I going to talk about here? So... One article was about Mary Orham, the founder, then about another founder, Natalie Wollen. And after I talked about the founders, then I talked about uh, the famous um, summer camp, the Pied Piper's Call. Uh, then an article was about World War II, uh, the uh, Village of Friendly Relations, could have been three or four articles. So I had written all these articles, and then when it came time to write the book, it was basically taking these articles and expanding them out to hit the entire breadth of what I was trying to talk about. Wow. And then it was a matter of, understand, I have no experience of writing before, so yeah. I'm making this up on the fly. But I had all, all the, um, I had the skeleton of the book in front of me. It was a matter of taking that skeleton, expanding it, and then stringing it together into a yeah. story. Yeah. So I wrote it basically in one summer. Wow. And I had a, I had a wonderful experience doing it too. I would, um, I don't know why, but I wrote in coffee shops. So I went around the Bay area and would write in coffee shops so I can drive by the uh, Santa Cruz uh, roasting company and say, I wrote village of friendly relations there <laughs> uh, up in mountain view. I can't think the reds something uh, <laughs> upstairs. I wrote uh, about world war two. So I can kind of drive around the Bay Area and go, I wrote an article, yeah. I wrote a chapter there. It's yeah. not uncommon for authors to go into coffee shops. Oh, interesting. Yeah, but I think typically they go into the same one. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. So yeah. yours was- I was spreading the wealth. Yeah, yours was definitely a different uh, type of yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, approach. Yeah. Uh, how did you find your publisher? Um, you know what? I don't even remember how I found them, Lloyd. I just know that I found them. It was probably more about price than anything. Uh, um, it's self-published. Yeah. Okay. Um, and they were on the East Coast. 
Um, and it was a good match for me on, on, on what my idea was. You have to understand, I was given um, creative control of this project. And that was very important to me um, because I wanted to be able to tell the story the, the way it was meant to be told. And I didn't want to have any interference with that. Um, for whatever reason that may be. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. Um, but the administration basically gave you free reign. They did. Good for them. They did. And um, um, yeah, so I was able to write it the way I wanted to write it. Um, and yeah, that's the story. Wow. I'm sticking to it. Yeah, <laughs> that's really great. Yeah. Uh, what uh, are you still at Hillbrook? No, I, I left Hillbrook about a year and a half ago. And that was, you were there for 22 years? 22, I think so. <laughs> wow. And what did you teach? I taught PE. I taught a little bit of history. Uh, and I coached a lot of sports. Wow. But, yeah. but no writing classes. <laughs> no. You know, it's really interesting. Um, it, it's more of a video background where, and when I say video background, I was more of a, um, an ideas producer kind of. So I think that was where um, a script writer uh -huh. Put it that way. Uh -huh. So I think that's where the book comes from. Where having that experience, yeah. not really the eye of the camera, but um, the uh, story. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, do you have a, another book in mind? I do. I do. <laughs> well, let's hear it. <laughs> I, I just don't want anyone to steal it. Um, I've had this idea for a while. So you know about um, Seven Ways to Kevin Bacon. Yes. Okay. So. I've always thought of the idea because I love research. It's 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 the nerd in me where I love it. It's I I could do it all all day long. <laughs> so my idea was to walk into let's say you walk into a subway restaurant and there are five people in line. Take those five people and find out how they are related to each other in some way in terms of how they know each other and they don't know it. The idea is you're standing in line with five people. No one's talking to each other, but you know each other in some manner. Maybe your grandfather went to the same college as this, this man. Maybe they went, uh, they lived in St. Louis when your uncle lived in St. Louis. What I would love to do is I would love to try to find out how you can connect five strangers in some way and turn it into a story at the same time. So maybe one person goes back to the 1800s, the other person goes to the 1930s, you start the story in the 1800s and you just tell a story and you intertwine them very gently into the story. I think it would be a challenge <laughs> that I'm willing to do. But, so you have not tried it yet? No, I have not tried it yet. But I thought, you know, imagine if, 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 if you could do it on the local level and then imagine the challenge of, you know, um, going to a, um, a, um, a yearly event that happens in Chicago where people come from all around the United States. Imagine trying to connect people who don't even live in the same uh, state. I'm not even sure if it'll work, <laughs> but it's, it's something that I, I would love the challenge. I would it, love the challenge. It sounds indeed like a challenge. Yes. But yes. But it, I, th I would seem like the hardest part would be to just get people in line to even talk to you. <laughs> exactly. You know, leave me the heck alone. Totally. Guy. You'd yeah. have to get five people and you'd have to say, hey, now I'm going to be researching. So I'm going to be asking you a lot of information about your family in order to try to get something going here. So if the but, line has four people or six people, it doesn't count. <laughs> doesn't matter how many people. I just said five. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, it is. All right. So you were at Hillbrook for almost 22 years yes. and you have been gone for about a year and a half. Yes. Uh, what is your next endeavor look like? Uh, it's my second passion. So my first passion was 10 years of this book. Um, about 10 years ago, I started my own nonprofit organization. Okay. Um, and what we are is we are a food recovery organization. Ah. Uh, we're called No Time to Waste. Uh, we um, recover food 
uh, and um, deliver it to charitable outreach programs. And you recover the food from where? Uh, we recover from restaurants, okay, uh, grocery stores, catering companies, delis, um, hospitals. Uh, we pick up the food and then we deliver to um, um, charitable outreach um, partners. Um, and I started it about 10 years ago, but I was a, a full-time school teacher, so uh -huh. couldn't put a lot of time into it. So it was basically a uh, weekend endeavor yeah. that I would do. Uh, and then when um, COVID hit in um, 2020, my business kind of exploded overnight. Wow. Um, and I was, I mean, and when I say overnight, I think we went into lockdown on March 16th. On March 17th, I was getting phone calls. Oh, wow. Now, I'm a school teacher at the time, and I'm able to do my classes on Zoom. Uh huh. So I was actually doing two jobs at once. I was recording videos of my lessons for students to watch, and I was picking up and delivering food during the day. And the business kind of became a five days a week program yeah, while yeah. I was teaching. And then at the end of that year is when I decided I really need to go full time. Just focus on it. Yeah, so this is now a seven days a week program. Uh, I have about 24 uh, volunteers in place that pick up weekly, including myself. Uh, we feed about 180 people a day. Ah. Um, and we are growing exponentially. And um, I, I love every minute of it. Oh, that's spectacular. You know, you know how athletes and actors say, I can't believe I get paid to do this? Yeah. I can't believe I get paid to do this. Love what I do. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. That's a thank you. That's that's sounds great. It's yeah. it's flat out noble, uh, <laughs> as many nonprofits are. And uh, I thank think you. that's just fantastic that you're that you're doing this. Uh, a good segue from uh, school to, you know, where you're you're teaching kids. Sure. You know, you're, you're helping develop minds. And here you get to actually help people develop their bodies. Yeah. Uh, yeah, good, good for feeling. you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, all right. Well, I think that we've uh, we've covered everything. Okay. Is there anything else that uh, that comes to mind that you want to add? No, I'm good. I'm good. I I really enjoy uh, uh, having the opportunity to talk about this again. This is uh, this is fun. Well, this was great. I'm really yeah. glad you came on. Yeah. So Thank you for that. Thanks, Lloyd. All right. So we are closing the book on today's podcast. I want to thank KCAT. Uh, and their people for always uh, being there for us, uh, for supporting it, for doing all the uh, the work to make this uh, something that you guys might be willing to watch and listen to. Uh, appreciate that. And if you want to um, either listen or watch uh, some of our other shows, all you have to do is go on Lloyd.show. And it'll help you go to uh, an, an audio, a video, whatever you want. Um, and it's L-L-O-Y-D. Um, I don't know why my parents did that to me. It cost me a lot of grief as a kid. But aside from that, uh, we're, we're uh, you know, feel free to go on and, uh, and take a look. And also, it'll give you an opportunity to see uh, all the other things that KCAT does, uh, especially pay attention to something called the Producers Network. Uh, you'll be in awe of what that uh, that group does for uh, for the community. So uh, that's about it. And uh, I'll see you all next time. You just heard Lit with Lloyd here on KCAT Radio. Explore all our KCAT original programming at kcat.org slash radio.